Good day to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today on uh, World Buddhist TV Wat Yanawa, um, a series of Dhamma Talks sponsored by Buddhist Sangha Youth of Thailand and Khun Tong Ta Christian Sense uh, Thai Danish Association. Uh, today, we are very glad to have you with us and it's our great opportunity to present you uh, to the, the English audience, uh, audience, you know, about uh, Buddha Dharma, especially uh, spiritualities. So we are very glad again to have our guest speaker, uh, Jeremiah Cha or Upasika Yasha. Uh, last show, we are very, very uh, pleased, you know, to have you talking about uh, the life, especially starting with the uh, uh, the root of lies uh, compared to the the tree, you know, uh, you have the tree of lies, and but my book I, I write in Thai we call the tree of love. <laughs> that That's right? why, yes, it is, mm -hmm. because uh, I would like to compare or to tell the people uh, through symbolism, especially tree. Everyone know about the tree, right? So that's why we have this tree, and then we we can. Uh, help the people with more, I mean, uh, um, concrete idea or concrete things, and then they can appreciate, you know. So thank you very much again for joining us. And so today we have to continue with the last show. Uh, so anything uh, today we would like to share with our audience? Well, thank you very much again for having me here. I appreciate it greatly. Mm -hmm. What my experience has been mm -hmm. is to appreciate the Buddha Dharma in a probably slightly different way than traditionalists. Mm -hmm. Exactly. As the Buddha Dharma has uh, expanded out through the world, mm -hmm. uh, introduced pretty much by Buddhism, Buddhists traveling to different traveling, cultures and yeah, cultures. Yeah. From place to place, right. That it's important to appreciate the diversity within mm -hmm. the Buddhist tradition mm -hmm because the Buddha did encourage that. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't encourage proselytizing, <laughs> but he encouraged people to translate the material uh -huh. into different cultures. Uh -huh. But what happens when you look, or when you introduce Buddhism into a different culture, that the cultures actually mutually distort, mm -hmm. but mutually support the doctrine in different ways, mm. such that it has a different character mm -hmm. as it moves throughout the world. And, of course, in the last 50 years or so, Buddhism has been introduced to the West. The West, mm -hmm. And that the West brings its own conditions and understandings and limitations. Yep. And um, uh, just funny, strange ideas right. to this practice. Yeah. Now, initially, in the, in the West, Buddhism was introduced as an academic. Oh, in, uh, the uh, discipline. in the beginning, yep, yep. In in the nineteen, the beginning of the nineteen, and uh, the late nineteen and the beginning of twentieth century, right? They are through the academics, yep. Well, well, certainly yes. In the the, the light of Asia was the, uh, introduced Asia in eighteen eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine, right? And it was in the nineteen twenties is uh, when the uh, uh, Europeans actually uh, took European, Buddhism right. and translated some materials. Evan Wentz in the nineteen thirties mm -hmm. came to Tibet and yep. translated the Tibetan Book of the Dead and other uh -huh. material. Right. But it was really in the nineteen fifties after the Second World War Second when World War. Uh, Venerable. Uh, uh, um, Lama. Well, Lama, yeah, mm. the, the Tibetan Lamas yep, came Tibetan to Berkeley. Um, and Zen Buddhism was introduced yep. to, in San Francisco Zen Suzuki. Center. Suzuki, yeah. Suzuki Roshi. Roshi. Yes, actually, yeah, I actually served him tea before, about two <laughs> oh, months really? before he died. <laughs> okay. And I was so nervous. Uh -huh. They talk about the the cup flowing over. Well, my mm. cup was just rattling on, <laughs> the, on the plate, and he was so caring, mm. so kind, mm. so understanding. Mm. And Baker Roshi was a, it certainly was a wonderful replacement for him. Mm. Very, very good people. Mm. In regards to that, part of the Tibetan, uh, the Buddhist tradition, mm. it certainly is academic, yeah. but much of it is the application of that academic, those academic mm -hmm. uh, meditations. And what I was able to do, or what I decided to do, is to 
translate or transcribe the, those meditational practices and put them into a mapping idea mm -hmm. mapping that idea. would better, e more easily understood by the Western yeah. person. Mm -hmm. And this is what we, this is what I developed yeah. initially. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what I did is would take the symbolism mm -hmm. as a pictographic yeah. learning process, learning which is process. actually much older than Buddhism. <laughs> oh, yeah. And As you mentioned, yeah, and, last show. And that uh, the reason that pictographs are so helpful mm -hmm. is that they're not language dependent. Mm -hmm. You understand a circle yeah. and you understand a tree, tree as a structure for mm -hmm. hanging or organizing information. Yeah. It, it is more self-evident mm -hmm. than a long treatise yeah. using very specific language words, which actually translate you have to translate back into a pictograph before you can understand it anyway. Mm. Well, we looked at the Bhava Chakra as initial conditions. Initial condition. Anytime you make a decision about anything, you mm -hmm. have conditions. Yeah. Not a single condition, not a single cause, yeah. but a whole series of conditions yeah, that exactly. influence your choice. Mm. In our uh, scripture, we have 24 conditions. We call the Pattaya. 24. <laughs> 24, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yes. That's quite a few. <laughs> quite a few, <laughs> exactly. But uh, actually, it's, uh, this is academic. Yeah? But uh, if we can apply, uh, as you mentioned, maybe we can have uh, more than that. But uh, this is uh, only Buddhism, uh, especially uh, during the funeral, you know, cremation ceremony, the monk have to change the condition. Uh, this is uh, one we call a Pattaya, after the Kusala. So that's why but people now listen to the Pali, they don't, <laughs> they don't mm. catch the meaning. <laughs> they don't understand any, I mean, uh, the meaning behind that. So. Well, what I try to do here mm -hmm. is to translate this into more common language. Mm, common language, I see. So that the ordinary person can appreciate right. that there are conditions that are understandable right. and recognizable and historically accurate mm -hmm. that, that such that they can appreciate the fact that maybe not all the decisions they make are helpful or useful, and that mm. they can change their minds. Mm. And that this is very important. Right. The next, the next process we looked at, other than the initial conditions, yeah. was the pathway through ordinary life. Ordinary life, right. And we were calling this the grand illusion. Grand illusion. <laughs> <laughs> which Einstein... Was that a grand illusion? <laughs> well, Einstein actually said this about the illusion. He said, it may be illusion, but it's very convincing. Mm -hmm. It turns out that it is, is incredibly convincing. Mm -hmm. And according to Richard Dawkins, who introduced means, it's self-sustaining. Yeah. All of these ideas existed before you were born, mm -hmm. will exist after you die, yeah. and are independently of you. If mm -hmm. you don't like the condition, it doesn't matter. It's going to stay there anyway. Yeah. So what happens is you either manage these conditions or you don't. Right. And that's a part of appreciating the pilgrimage, yeah. is to recognize the conditions you wish to choose to work mm -hmm. with and the conditions you wish to avoid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the end of the last show, we were looking at the inside house. Your, oh, inside house. Your personal self, where you live. Yeah. And where you live is, you need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And that mostly you have to clean up your house. Oh. Meditation, most p houses are, are cluttered with yeah. ideas and expectations right. and people's opinions of you mm. and other ideas that come from outside of your true nature Exactly. that actually don't have anything to do with you mm -hmm. and you can't do anyway. <laughs> so part of the meditation is to clean out your house. Yeah. And sitting quietly, doing your chanting, doing your breathing is house cleaning. Mm. And that you have to clean out your living room and mm. your bedrooms and your closets and your attics and your <laughs> basements <laughs> and your dungeons. <laughs> everything. And you have to clean out everything. <laughs> and actually, even, even in this meditation, you have to take out, clear out the house. Mm. And once you clear out the house, you have to take out the foundation of the house. Yeah, exactly. So that, and then you have pathways all through this house and garden, which mm. are, are your habits. Mm. You have yes. to clean out the habits. Yep. In, in Buddhism, we call maybe dormant uh, in t uh, tendency, you know, <coughs> which uh, the very, I mean, uh, inherent, you know, 
within ourselves. You know, sometimes we cannot see, as you mentioned. <laughs> it's very difficult to see. Very difficult to see that. But you have to clean out your house, your attics, the house itself, the foundation, the pathways to the house. Right. Everything until you get to what's called, like, cultivated ground. Mm -hmm. And you have to plow it up until you have just a place to work. Yeah. It's cleaning out your mind so that you have something to plant there. Mm. The lotus flower is you plant that right. <laughs> in the ground and see what grows. Yeah. <laughs> but until you cultivate a place to grow something, uh -huh. there's nothing to nothing can happen. Yeah. So none understanding your inside house is important. Mm. But the idea is to clear it all out so you yeah. have working a working environment to mm. do your meditational practices, yeah. to be who you are. Yeah. This is a pretty dif fairly difficult and but very common practice mm. within the mas monastic or meditational environments. Mm -hmm. The next part next here pass, yeah. is we have the conditions. Right. We have the ordinary, ordinary lifestyle, lifestyle. But eventually you get to a limit of those conditions. Mm -hmm. And all of these conditions are limiting by definition. Mm -hmm. The next part, next part, oh interesting, is uh, the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it? What's about that? The of whole one? Eventually what happens in your pilgrimage is you run into a wall. Mm. And they use metaphors in many different ways, out, even outside the spiritual tradition, of mm. running into this wall. Yeah. And mostly you run into this wall with your face. <laughs> you go, you're traveling too fast, not paying attention to what you're doing, mm. and you crash into something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at, okay, what is that? Yep. It's a lifestyle choice. It could be relationship issues. It could yep. be just limitations on your own choices. Right. So. And, and because all of these choices are limited in some way, mm -hmm. you will run into that wall that limits those conditions. Yep. Eventually, what happens is you have windows in those walls. Mm. And you look through the window and you go, there's something on the other side. Oh. Do you want to go there? <laughs> and even if you want to go there, mm -hmm. you can't get through the window. Yep. You have to work your way along the wall until you come to a doorway. Doorway, yep. Now, doorways are uh, a very pervasive uh -huh. symbol process mm -hmm. in even in, in, in uh, layman symbolism. Uh -huh. The movie Matrix is mm -hmm. a perfect example Matrix. of doorways <laughs> that you can choose into different realities. It's an excellent film, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But anyway, you actually will come to one of your doorways. Mm. And in the doorway, you have to... The doorway is, in fact, not locked. Not locked. It's even open a little bit so you can see through, yeah. so that you know, in fact, it is a doorway, uh -huh. that there's something on the other side. Yep. The question is, are you going to go through that doorway? <laughs> and that is a very personal choice. And mm. it's, it happens to be a very uh, important part of a meditational experience mm -hmm. is going through that doorway yep. and finding out what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when you go through that doorway and the doorway closes, mm -hmm. it also disappears. Yeah. So going back <laughs> is usually not an option. Yeah. Because mostly when you go through a doorway, you don't fit back into where you came from. Yeah. And many times you get a huge amount of criticism by doing that. Mm. People will think that you're crazy, that yeah. you've made stupid choices, you're going to fail, you're going yep. to starve to death. Mm -hmm. In fact, they tell you this, that if you choose a spiritual life, that you basically will live under a tree and get mm. rained on and starve to death. Yep. <clears throat> it's very intimidating mm -hmm. to actually face those criticisms and say, no, I yeah. go through the doorway anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is not an easy step. Yeah. And also you can tell the difference between people who have gone through a doorway and people who have chosen not to. Mm. And this becomes very clear yep. from people who actually are able to do that. Right. Now, the symbolism here is on the other side of the wall, the yeah. rules change. The rules change? Absolutely. <laughs> For example, if before you're married, you have a certain set of rules you live by. Okay. Once you're married, you have a different set of rules to live by. Yeah. And you learn those rules and you live by them well or you mm -hmm. don't. Mm. But understand that the rules do change. Yeah. The rules from the, the living in family life and with your parents mm -hmm. and the rules of business and earning yep. your living are different. 
Yeah. Each of these domains mm -hmm. represent rules change, rule changes, and yeah. as you are able to understand the rule changes and mm -hmm. apply them in your lifestyle choices, right. it depend, it, that, ha, that is a criterion for your effectiveness mm -hmm. within that new condition. New condition, I see. And so all we're doing here in the map is recognizing or appreciating the fact that rules change when you go through that door. <laughs> and figuring out what those rules are is part of your meditation. Right, exactly. And mostly you will get it wrong mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. And that's that takes integrity, that takes patience. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually really hard to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and most people, or many people, are, are unwilling to do that. Mm. And I think when you look at people who do make these transitions and go ahead and, and, and appreciate how difficult it is mm -hmm. to learn and to appreciate the changes, mm. it, there is reason to respect and honor that choice. Yep. Mm. It doesn't mean that staying within the illusion is wrong. Mm. It just means it's a different choice. Right. And that not everybody can do a spiritual path. Right. Uh, and that everyone has to appreciate everybody's choices yep. as comparably valid. Mm -hmm. The Buddha didn't say you had to be a man mm -hmm. to be enlightened. You actually didn't even have to be human yep. to be enlightened. Exactly. And so that we need to, to honor the fact that women and even young people <laughs> yeah. uh, can make this choice. Yep and honor that choice. As you mentioned, this uh, human values is uh, very important in, in our, I mean, uh, nowadays, or the present world situation, because we are globali uh, globalization age, right? So that's why we are interdependent. We have to think the others, to view others as our relative, our um, uh, human, I mean, status first before the belong to any members of the country. For example, you are American, uh, I'm Thai, I'm Buddhist monk, something like that. You, uh, that's a, you have like a, the idea of the, of the we and they. We and they. It means like separate to discrimination, to discriminate or make discrimination among each other. The idea of, of, of the human value, as you mentioned, very, I mean, uh, precious yeah, nowadays. Otherwise, we cannot. I mean, uh, help the world, you know. Uh, especially when, when you do something wrong in, in one side of the world, it affects the other side. For example, the, the, the stock market in, in New York collapsed and then gave effect to the <laughs> maybe Thailand or even the underdeveloped country, <laughs> you know. This is like a interdependent and then it's based on the human values. That's, I, uh, yes, we have to to try to clarify this with the people. First, uh, human value, right? And another status, that's we call the status uh, the after our birth, yes. That's uh, we call the maybe American or Thai, this is uh, uh, nationality, or even the, for the Buddhist monk, something like that. Uh, that is the, the, later, the later status. It's not in, that's why as you mentioned, I think it's a uh, very we appreciate, and then we can understand more about Buddha Dharma through the human. I mean, the uh, human values first. Human values mean uh, uh, whoever they are. If they are human, they need happiness. They hate uh, suffering, right? So this is the basic. I mean, the premise for the solving all the problem. Otherwise. We think other as the enemy, the problem uh, could not be solved out. So that's why I think it's, uh, it would be, I mean, uh, beneficial to all of us to understand. I mean, uh, in this point, as you mentioned, the man uh, become the human uh, first, and then we can get, I mean, uh, uh, enlightenment. <laughs> uh, that's what uh, the Buddha said, or even. The, the, the kids and the adults, you know. Uh, in the beginning, the Buddha, uh, I mean, uh, support the novice, the young boy, to become the novice. And at that time, the novice can, I mean, get enlightenment, could get enlightenment at that time. You know, that means they have also the potential, potentiality, you know, to reach the speciality, to reach enlightenment. That's why, 
I think it's a very good point. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so another point? Mm -hmm. Well, certainly the Buddha encouraged this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that he didn't set conditions. Yeah. He said, the conditions are become enlightened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those were the only conditions. <laughs> yeah. He didn't make any other condition at all, which mm -hmm. is very helpful. Yeah. From here, from after you pass through the doorway, well, you'll, you'll notice again the conditions and mm -hmm. the rules change. Yep. What happens is you eventually throw yourself into what's called the river of life. Mm -hmm. And this is a very dramatic choice as contrasted to just living a pathway. Mm -hmm. Because the river of life or this momentum we have for understanding, as you yeah. say, other cultures and even ourselves, mm -hmm. what happens normally is you get through here and you go over the waterfall, <laughs> which means you crash on the Water, rocks. The crash on the rocks. You miss the first out, yeah. the exit out, because you've just been crashed on the rocks. Mm -hmm. You get eaten by the alligators here, right. which are critics and mm -hmm. criticisms and your family and your friends <laughs> and people that liked you before and don't like you now, and they uh -huh. make all sorts of comments. Okay. You actually ask for help. Uh -huh. Why is this... Why is this help? Why is this happening? <laughs> What's happening? By the way, the bottle is going nowhere. It's just floating in the middle of the river of life, and mm. it's, you're not getting any help at all. Yep. Then you wind up going around Upstream, the river again, yep. and you keep going around. into this cycle mm -hmm. until you figure out how to get out mm. of the cycle yep. of the life cycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have more three minutes. Three so minutes. please summarize <laughs> for the, this show. Well, part of being here is figuring out what am I doing here. Oh. So what the map does is ask questions at critical points mm -hmm. so that you know where you are and you're yep. paying attention to where you are. Mm. And if you're not paying attention to where you are, how can you get somewhere else? Yep. So the object here of debate and discussion and asking questions in the first place is to appreciate not only where you are, mm -hmm. but to defend and describe and to understand that and yeah. to share it with others. Yeah. With that, the map itself is a model yeah. for not only appreciating, appreciating the map, but practicing your, yourself with the conditions within the map. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you need others. <laughs> exactly. And, <laughs> and the others are give you feedback on how well you're doing. Right. And it turns out that other people kn actually know you well enough to give you feedback on what yep. you're doing. Thank you very much. So uh, I hope the audience would appreciate uh, our show with uh, spiritual map, especially uh, with our guest speaker, uh, Upashika Yasha Ashe Michelle. So I would like to uh, raise uh, all of you, you know, to, to request all of you, if you have any doubts, any questions, any comments to share with us, please feel free to do so. Do so. And so today, again, we have the book to, to present to you, you know, uh, written by uh, Upashika Yasha, we call a Buddhist humor and autographical uh, journey exactly in the former our I mean intention we would like to put uh, the average version but it's okay next time we can do that so that's why uh, for the all of Upashikaya uh, especially his character you know you can see through his I mean uh, uh, his uh, writings or his works Buddhist humor if you need this, uh, please contact us at uh, uh, the address below. The, and uh, also, if you would like to learn more about us, Buddhist Sankhajus Thailand, uh, please welcome. And for today, wishing you peace in the Dharma. And uh, see you next time, uh, same time, same place. Until then. <laughs>